I ghosted my family and fiancé after what my sister did, I need a little advice on the matter as I don't know what to do anymore. I was 21 when my fiancé asked me to marry him. He was the absolute light of my life. We had known each other since preschool, and our families are very close. He would come and have dinner with us on a daily basis and vice versa. He doesn't have any siblings, but I have two older sisters. Which is very important as he was also very close with them. We grew up together. When we started dating, I don't think our parents stopped celebrating for weeks. He helped me deal with a lot of my anxiety, and even when I gained a little weight and my mother berated me saying he was going to leave me, he told her off and said he loved me for who I was, not for what I looked like, even though he claimed I was the most beautiful girl in the world to him. We were only engaged for six months before the incident. My middle oldest sister, let's call her Nikki, was a very cold person, she never showed any affection, she only ever opened up to my fiancé as she said she saw him as a brother and he also helped her through a lot of her dark times such as battling substance addictions and breaking the law. She and I never saw eye to eye. I loved her dearly because she was my sister but didn't like her as a person. Out of the blue, she tells me she wants to take me clubbing as we had never been together before and she felt bad that she was so distant to me. I agreed and that night we went out. Clubbing wasn't really my style, but once I had a few drinks, I loosened up a little and began having fun. The night was going smoothly until Nikki spotted a guy across the room whom she claimed she wanted to climb like a tree, she walked over to him and within a few minutes, she was back and she had a sour expression on her face. I asked her what was up, but she never said anything. I kept pressing, because I didn't want our night to be ruined, she then told me the guy didn't want her number, but he wanted mine instead. I told her he was a loser, and there were plenty of guys around who would commit crimes to be with a girl like her, she didn't budge though. She told me she needed to use the restroom and then we would leave. I waited for another hour, during which time I was sipping on a lot of different cocktails. I then started feeling really dizzy and lightheaded. I figured I'd just cab it home as I was certain Nikki had left. On the way out though, I bumped into a friend of Nikki's whom she had briefly dated. He asked me if I needed a hand to my car and I explained I was getting a cab. He said he was getting ready to leave and we could share one. I told him okay and we walked out of the club together and into the first cab we saw. I tried to find my phone in my purse, but I felt myself getting dizzier and dizzier. I don't remember what happened next as I blacked out and the next morning I woke up on a hard sofa, my head pounding. When I came to, I realized I was in Nikki's friend's house and my phone was sitting on the glass table in front of me, but it was flat. When he noticed I was awake, he offered some tablets and water and explained that I had passed out in the cab and he didn't remember my parents' address so he just picked me up and took me back here where he laid me on the sofa. I told him I needed to go home as my fiancé would be worried. He called a cab and I left. When I arrived at my parents' house, my mother, father, Nikki, my fiancé, and his parents were all standing in the living room. I thought they were worried about me, but the instant I opened my mouth my fiancé asked how could I do this to him. I tried to explain that my phone went flat, but he then went on screaming about how I could cheat on him. I was baffled. Why would he think that? I tried to explain the night's events, but I kept getting cut off. Nikki then chimed in and said I was a lying ass, and how could I be so heartless to a man who has been there for me through thick and thin. She went on to say I kept flirting with random guys all night and then when she went to the bathroom, she saw me leave with her friend. I told her what had happened and she showed me photos on her phone whereas we were leaving, his hand was on my back ushering me outside, yes the photo did look horrible and I was so intoxicated I didn't even realize his hand was on my back at all. My fiancé was so angry, he kept shouting and his mom and mine were both crying. I then asked Nikki to call her friend and he would confirm nothing happened but when she called him, he told a completely different story. He said I begged him to take me back to his, and when he did, we slept together multiple times. I saw red and started crying and yelling at Nikki because I knew she had organized this whole thing to make me look bad. I begged my fiancé to believe me, but he just shook his head and left. When everyone had cleared out, my mother slapped me across the face and told me to get out. I left and went to a friend's house where I stayed for a few nights. During those nights I called my fiancé crying and pleading with him to believe me that nothing happened but it all fell on deaf ears as he never returned any of my calls or texts. My mom texted me and told me she was kicking me out and that she couldn't believe I would do such a thing and a lot of hurtful other slurs I don't think I could repeat here. She didn't even give me time to get my things as she threw everything out. I was now homeless. None of my family would take me in as they chose my fiancé and mother's side. I was homeless and single in less than a day and a half, my entire world had been taken away because of Nikki's lies. Now for weeks I tried everything to get my fiancé back and my family. The limit for me though was when Christmas time had come and I went over to my mother's house to try and reconcile. I was sleeping from couch to couch during this time. When I got to my parents' house, I knocked on the door but no one answered. My friend then called me and told me she just saw on Facebook that my family were in another state celebrating Christmas and they had posted pictures online. Everyone was there, my sisters, parents, grandparents and even my fiancé and his family. When I myself saw the photos, I couldn't stop crying as they all looked so happy. 
I cried for days and days before deciding to block them all. I even returned my engagement ring. My friend knew someone a couple hours away who was looking for some help in his restaurant and he even had living arrangements above where he worked so I could get rent at a cheap price and work at the same time. I wanted to start over with my life as it hurt me that no one took my side and they all left me to fend for myself. I was able to move pretty quickly and was doing well. The apartment was tiny and I had to work 10 plus hours almost every day, but I was able to save a lot of money. I'm not living in the apartment anymore, I was able to rent a much nicer condo but I am still working at the restaurant as assistant manager. Now it has been roughly two years since I left and have not spoken to any of my family. I had no idea what was going on with them until I got a knock on my door. It was my ex fiance I was shocked to say the least, all these feelings came rushing back and all I wanted to do was jump into his arms. But then I remembered the pain I had felt and tried to slam the door in his face, but he stopped it and asked that I let him explain. He said that Nikki had gotten married and she had confessed that she lied about the situation because she had found someone she loved so much and realized what a horrible thing she had done. I asked him how he found me and he said my friend told him. My entire family has been trying to get in touch with me and want to see me. I told him I needed time to see if I even wanted to have them in my life. He left and I have been a mess since. I don't know what to do, I know I. Will never ever forgive Nikki, she could rot for all I cared but it's hard because my other family and fiancé didn't know she was lying, but I also felt like they abandoned me too quickly without letting me explain my side. I don't know if I should forgive them, 